uh, as per the last lecture you uh, must have understood the definition of medical devices uh, and uh, what is the importance of competent body or the difference between competent body notified body and what all different categories of medical devices across the world so we have covered us europe pg australia japan canada uae the gcc area and uh, we have covered the regulatory process in short we have covered ce marking as well so today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the key differences uh, between the mdd and mdr so what is mdd first try to understand what is mdd and what is mdr so eu uh, in europe it has established the medical device regulation and in vitro diagnostic regulation medical device regulation means mdr and in in vitro diagnostic regulations means ivdr so this mdd and uh, md ivdr and mdr is a replacement to previously mdd and ivdd so d means it is nothing but it is a directives so mdr is a, a new regulation and earlier it was uh, called as a directive so the difference is mdd to mdr so the difference is it's applicable in both the cases like medical devices and in vitro diagnostic that is why it is called mdr and ivdr so the mdr is significantly more comprehensive and detailed compared to the mdd uh, how it is uh, uh, differ from mdd to mdr so the previously uh, which is 25 years old uh, regulation what we are using in the medical device industry uh, which is called mdd which which was comprising 23 articles and 12 annexes and it was over uh, about 60 pages whereas the new mdr which is uh, published recently which has 123 article and 17 annexes and uh, that uh, comprises of 175 pages so you could see uh, there are huge changes between you know 60 pages to 175 pages and 12 annexes to 17 annexes and 23 articles to 123 articles so europe's new medical devices regulations will bring significant regulatory changes that may impact multiple business units within your organization so uh, what is meant by surgically invasive device surgically invasive device means an invasive device which penetrates inside the body through the surface of the body including two mucous membranes of the orifice with the aid or in the context of a surgical operation as per annex 8 i will repeat the definition surgically invasive device means an invasive device which penetrates inside the body through the surface of the body including through mucous membranes of the body orifice with the aid or in the context of surgical operation whereas injured skin or mucous membrane means an area of the skin or a mucous membrane presenting a pathological change or change following disease or a wound so i will give one example uh, just to understand in a better way uh, suppose if we uh, apply bandaid when we get injured when we have a wound we apply through bandaid so bandaid it apply through our skin right so injured skin or mucous membrane means an area of the skin or a mucous membrane presenting a pathological change so a wound is getting healed because of the medication uh, applied through that bandaid and we changes right so wound is uh, recovered and uh, our skin appearance may change that means the medication which is given uh, by the means of medical device which is bandaid and uh, through which the patient uh, wound is recovered so this is the one best example i can give over here and uh, i hope it is uh, understood by you all guys if you not understood we will take the question and answer session at the end of the lecture then let us understand uh, what is active device active device is covered under article 2 it means that any device 
the operation of which depends on source of energy other than that generated by the human body for that purpose or by gravity and which acts by changing the density of or converting that energy again devices intended to transmit energy substances or other elements between an active device and the patient without any significant change shall not be deemed to be active devices software shall also be deemed to be an active device so uh, in certain cases some software are used uh, you know uh, like if you go to physiotherapist there are many many medical devices used for the physiotherapeutic uh, activity uh, then one more example i will say uh, uh, you must have seen the patches uh, which emits the infrared radiation uh, i work for one of the client uh, in dubai and uh, we have uh registered uh, you know patches uh, which used to uh, emit the infrared energy and which used to generate and heat when we apply through our uh, uh, painful area say for example if you if i have knee joint pain or if i have shoulder pain so different size of patches uh, were available uh, and you have to apply those patches through which the uh, infrared energy is generated the heat is generated through the body and the uh, we used to feel better so these are the two examples are sufficient to understand what is meant by uh, the, this device which transmit the energy okay and which does not transmit the energy is not categorized under this uh, active devices then reusable surgical instruments means what instrument intended for surgical use in cutting drilling sewing scratching scraping clamping retracting clipping or similar procedure without a connection to an active device and which is intended by the manufacturer to be reused after appropriate procedure such as cleaning disinfection and sterilization have been carried out so the best example you can see whenever you go to dentist they are using so many medical uh, devices and the equipment which has to be cleaned sterilized after uh, you know using for one patient to another patient so this comes under reusable uh, uh, instrument i mean uh, even the surgical where the major surgery bypass surgery kidney operation there are so many devices we are using for the cutting drilling sewing scratching scraping and everything so all those surgical devices has to be clean sterilized with the appropriate procedure and so that we can reuse in our pharmaceutical industry also most of the equipment we go for uh, autoclaving sterilization system so that the same equipment can be used for manufacturing of the next batches so this comes under reusable instrument then the continuous use means what the entire duration of use of the same device without regard to temporary interruption of use during a procedure or temporary removal of for purposes such as cleaning or disinfection of the device whether the interruption of use or the removal of temporary shall be established in relation to the duration of the use prior to and after the period when the use is interrupted or the device is removed and b is what the accumulated use of a device that is intended by the manufacturer to be replaced immediately with another of the same type here i could give the example of <coughs> pacemaker which is placed uh, for the heart functioning and uh, which has uh, i think uh, stability for 5 years and after 5 years we have to use, replace that uh, pacemaker so the patient uh, should have uh, you know uh, the doctor and the manufacturer and the patient should have all the history all the data when it was placed uh, in your body you know the and the date of manufacture of that pacemaker then the expiry so before expiry the patient has to be admitted and replaced with the uh, that pacemaker or at least it should be clean sterilized and uh, we can reuse it if it has to be continuously used so uh, uh, this is pretty clear uh, the definition and the meaning of each definition is given under each section 
then direct diagnosis a device is considered to allow direct diagnosis when it provides a diagnosis of the disease or condition in question by itself or when it provides decisive information for the diagnosis direct diagnosis is very very important uh, because which which should give the perfect result now if, uh, in covid uh, cases like you must have heard about rapid kit rapid kit is used to diagnose the covid patient whether he is positive or negative then there are so many uh, diagnostic kits are available example uh, prega kit which is used for the pregnancy test so you have to just uh, put two three drops of urine and it will give the result so these these are the equipment or the diagnostic kit which are available in the market then the implantable device implantable device covered under article 2.5 that means any device including those that are partially or wholly absorbed which is intended or to be totally introduced into the human body or to replace an epithelial surface or the surface of the eye by clinical intervention and which is intended to remain in place after the procedure any device intended to be partially introduced into the human body by clinical intervention and intended to remain in place after the procedure for at least 30 days shall also be deemed to be an implantable device so what does it mean implantable device means which is implanted in our body like you must have uh, uh, seen the knee knee implants uh, the hip hip implants and there are so many implants uh, inserted in our body uh, to you know recover uh, for some orthopedic or the injury when the accident happens so there are lots of varieties of implants are placed in our body so this will come under implantable device and there are devices which are used only for the at least for the 30 days will also come under the implantable device that is the meaning of this de definition then uh, we have to discuss about the 13 major changes from mdd to mdr let us talk about the first the mdr is four times longer and contain five more annexes than the mdr so in the first slide itself i have uh, told you what is the difference the mdd the old one is of you know 60 pages whereas this is 175 pages then there are annexes so uh, uh, you have to understand that there are lots of changes uh, uh, as compared to mdd when we compared with the new mdr so the word safety appears 290 times in the mdr and mdd by comparison uses it only 40 times so what is the meaning of this word safety appears that means they have focused more on to safety parameters so the whole industry whether it is a pharma industry whether it is a medical device industry or food industry we have to uh, you know trust on the safety parameters which is very very important because all this wherever we are working in pharma food otc or medical devices safety is a major concern because all human beings are using this product so uh, that is a major difference what we observed uh, when we talk about the difference between mdd to mdr and it is appear 290 times the c then significant changes in wording used in the new law will require companies to rationalize their portfolios and perform a global impact assessment in order to implement the necessary changes to remain compliant now you must be uh, having suppose xyz companies having mdd already in place and they are selling 100 products into the market now there is a big question so 100 products how can i change from mdd to mdr so they have to implement the whole system they have to apply as per new rules and regulations they have to meet all the safety parameters if they must not have condu uh, conducted clinical uh, studies or the clinical evidence is insufficient so they have to Uh, go for the clinical evidence just see the uh, hundred varieties of products if they have to go through this the implementation will take long time but they have to go for this and that's the reason each country has given sufficient time for this implementation and now if you see everywhere this mdd to because of mdd to mdr 
implementation is going on in all medical devices manufacturer units and uh, india is nowhere like india is also important so they have also applied as per our eu mdr and in india also they have given sufficient time for the implementation from mdr to mdr then fourth change is uh, uh, annex 1 sorry uh, the impact assessment the third was the impact assessment uh, as per this new rule and the fourth one is what annex 1 which talks about general safety and performance requirements which identifies new condition that will need to be addressed for the most legacy devices that c marked under the mdd existing product must be recertified in accordance with the new regulations so as i said earlier uh, all the uh, equipment or all the medical devices which are already into market they have to recertify for the ce mark so ce mark is used major in the eu market and we have discussed during the last lecture how the ce mark is done then the fifth change is the mdr will require most companies to update clinical data technical documentation and labeling then there is a unique device identification uh, which identifies your uh, uh, medical device will be implemented to help track device throughout the economic operator supply chain and will be required on the label on all labels what does it mean throughout the economic operator supply chain that means suppose if your medical device is uh, implants orthopedic implants but to make that orthopedic implant you must be having a supply chain that means you must be taking their parts or the materials from different different vendors okay so different different vendors must be giving suppose your implants may comprise of 500 elements or at least you consider 100 elements out of 100 elements suppose 50 elements or the 50 items you are uh, taking from different different vendors so all these materials should be identified so each item or the each uh, what i said element has to have the unique identification number so and which will be your part of the system and this is very critical uh, the numbering system and you have to follow if you are a, a medical device manufacturer you have to focus on udi so that is why uh, uh, the all manufacturer has given sufficient time uh, for making all the changes and it should uh, you know affect uh, on your sorry it should be seen on your label as well so while the scope of the mdd did not encompass medical purpose device and i made these are both included under mdr the definition of medical device is broadened to include non medical and cosmetic device not previously regulated so what does it mean in mdd which is the old standard uh, in that non medical and the cosmetic devices were not regulated and uh, those are included in this mdr examples like products for cleaning disinfection or sterilization of devices are as well as contact lenses liposuction equipment or epilation lasers so all these products which is used as a disinfectant sterilization cleaning agent those are also included in medical devices that is why you must have seen that the major rules talks about each and every medical device will be considered or regulated as per the drug because in pharma industry drug is highly regulated and that's the reason uh, if you recollect the definition that there are safety uh, word is coming to 90 times than the mdd and uh, uh, this is very important factor when we are using it on human being and there was a case study uh, when johnson and johnson implants has affected you know the patient life uh, uh, that was a biggest case study uh, happened you know two three years back and it was published in times of india and all over the world and because of that this changes have happened you know drastically from mdd to mdr the patient uh, when uh, the implant was inserted in his body uh, you know after a few years he started eluting uh, the particles in his blood 
so the particles uh, suppose if it corrode still uh, implants have been inserted and after a few years if it is not biocompatible and it is affecting to your body and it is uh, uh, the corrosion has happened and the it, leaching is happening in your body so what will happen it is highly highly dangerous uh, for our health injurious for our health and that the reason safety is a major concern and this was the uh, case studies based on which you know lots of uh, changes have happened from old mdd to new mdr rules so uh, come to next point that is manufacturers will need to generate and provide more in depth clinical data to prove safety and performance claims including titer equivalency standard so again uh, due to safety we have to uh, you know uh, majorly uh, concern about the safety and performance claims whatever claims you are uh, going to give on your label has to be titer then manufacturers will need to report all incidents injuries and death into an eu portal that will centralize relevant data so that patients have access to more safety related information reporting for incidents that did not result in death or serious deterioration in health is moved to 15 days from 30 days so you must have heard uh, in uh, pharma industry it is called pharma go vigilance here it is called materio vigilance so whatever um, injury happens or death happens everything uh, is you know uh, recorded and updated on eu portal and uh, all the updated guidelines related to safety information uh, you will find on eu portal and if it is there is a serious death or any uh, uh, serious deterioration happens Uh, in health then it is uh, moved from 15 days to 30 days and uh, the patient should have access to that portal uh, so that patient uh, himself will uh, you know take care of all such things if patient himself is not aware of that there is a rule that uh, you know we can lodge the complaint or we can inform to health authority that such things are happening in my body after insertion then uh, the patient and the you know when the uh, implant are inserted into his body the doctors the healthcare professional should train or tell or uh, suggest him that whatever happens in your body whatever changes you have to intimate us immediately and that's how the you know uh, safety is taken care of so then the companies undergoing transition will need to revisit core processes including the quality assurance risk management and post marketing expectations so this will require careful review planning and updating to re implement in compliance with the new requirement so simple uh, you have to establish the uh, very good system in your company uh, for you know updating database then uh, your quality assurance department should be uh, very good to assess the risk so the risk should be assessed the risk